growl in the distance. Now imagine every sound around you means something. Every chirp, every call, every whisper of movement, and you understand it. The fox that darts between the trees isn't just running. She's warning her kits of danger. The crows above aren't just making noise. They're arguing over food. The deer watching you from the shadows asks a question. What are you doing here? This is not a fantasy. This is a thought experiment. A question that tests the very limits of language, intelligence, and the human mind. What if you could talk to animals? Communication defines our species. It's how civilizations are built, how ideas move through time. But language, human language, is uniquely complex, abstract, symbolic. We use it to describe things that don't exist yet and feelings we can't see. So what happens if that barrier between us and the rest of the living world suddenly disappears. What if tomorrow you woke up and could understand the speech of every creature on Earth? Let's imagine it. At first, it would seem miraculous. A dog's bark no longer random, a cat's purr, not just comfort, but conversation. The world would come alive in ways we can barely comprehend. The city would roar with meaning birds debating over rooftops, pigeons exchanging, gossip from street to street, rats whispering, Beneath the pavement, the natural world would become deafening. But this ability wouldn't just change how we hear the world, it would change how we live in it. To understand an animal is to face the truth of what it feels, its fear, its pain, its hunger, its joy. For the first time, the moral distance between human and non-human would collapse. Would we still eat them? Would we still cage them? Would we still test on them? What happens when empathy can no longer hide behind silence? Let's take it step by step. At first, scientists would rush to study this phenomenon. Neuroscientists, linguists, ethologists. They'd want to know, how? Did humans evolve a new brain function? Did animals always speak like this and we just never heard? Perhaps it's not even speech as we know it. Maybe it's more like thought and emotion. Intent directly translated into our minds. A shared mental language. If that's true, then this isn't communication through sound. It's communication through consciousness. And that changes everything. Let's look at what animals already communicate. Elephants mourn their dead. Whales sing across oceans. Bees dance to describe the location of flowers. Prairie dogs have different alarmy, calls for different predators, and even describe their size and color. Ravens remember human faces. Dolphins give each other names. They already have language. We just don't speak it. Now imagine the floodgates opening. We could ask a whale what it feels when it sings. We could Ask a wolf why it hunts, we could ask a chimpanzee what it dreams about. For the first time, we would see the world not through human eyes, but through theirs. And that revelation would shake civilization to its core. Farms would fall silent. The moment the cows spoke, the chickens pleaded, the pigs begged to live. The meat industry would collapse overnight. Imagine a farmer walking into a barn and every animal turning toward him, speaking, pleading. Would he still raise them for slaughter? Zeus would transform from attractions to prisons. The lion behind glass would tell you how it remembers the savanna. The elephant would ask why its herd was taken. Every pet owner would hear the truth of their companion's thoughts. Some would be touched by love, others heartbroken by resentment because not every animal would forgive us. Governments would have to act, new laws, new rights, Non-human personhood would no longer be philosophy, it would be necessity. Courts would face impossible questions. If a dolphin can speak, can it testify? If a gorilla says no, can it be kept in a lab? If a forest full of animals demands protection, can a nation ignore it? The very definition of humanity would fracture. Economies would tremble, fishing industries would vanish, fashion dependent on animal skins or feathers would end, medical. Testing would have to reinvent itself entirely, and yet, new industries would rise. Imagine entire companies dedicated to human-animal negotiation. Animal. Ambassadors, interspecies diplomacy, conservation, would become cooperation. Instead of tagging elephants, we could simply ask them where they go. Instead of tracking whales, we could listen to their stories. We would finally know what extinction means, not as a number, but as the loss of a voice. But it wouldn't all be peaceful because once every creature can speak, they can also accuse forests burned, oceans poisoned, species erased. 
the world's animals would rise not with violence, but with words. And words can be more powerful than weapons. Humanity would face a mirror it cannot look away from. Every animal we've driven to the edge would have something to say. The polar bears, drifting on melting ice, asking why their home is gone. The coral reefs, fading, whispering that they remember color. The bees, their numbers dwindling, warning that our fates are tied. Would we finally listen, or would we turn away again? In this new world, communication could bridge or break everything. Imagine a city at night, streetlights glowing, cars moving in streams of motion. But now, above the noise of engines, another layer, voices, bats navigating the air mice whispering underfoot, owls conversing from rooftops. Humanity would be overwhelmed by the sheer scale of consciousness surrounding it, every living being, thinking, feeling, speaking. Would the human ego survive that revelation? For centuries, we've believed we're at the top of the chain, that intelligence makes us special. But what if it doesn't? What if we've simply never been able to hear the others? History offers a comparison. When Europeans first encountered new civilizations, they often misunderstood them, declaring them lesser, simply because they didn't share a language. Now imagine that same arrogance, but multiplied across every species. For the first time, humanity would confront the reality that it has never been alone in intellect, just isolated by silence. Language, it turns out, was never the barrier. Understanding was. There would be those who resist, those who refuse to believe, those who exploit the new voices for entertainment, media, power. But others would dedicate their lives to learning, to forming alliances, to creating a shared grammar of life. Schools might teach not only English or Mandarin, but birdsong, whale, wolf, children growing up multilingual across species, diplomats working with animal representatives at the United Nations, a council that includes human, whale, raven, and elephant. It sounds impossible until you realize that intelligence doesn't require human form. It requires awareness, connection, memory, and animals have all of those in abundance. But even paradise has shadows. With communication comes conflict. Predators and prey could speak, but their relationship wouldn't change. Would a lion apologize to the gazelle it kills? Would the gazelle forgive it? Nature is built on survival, and survival is not kind. If all creatures could talk, they could understand one another, but that doesn't mean they'd agree. Just as humans still fight, so too would the natural world. But now, every act of violence would carry meaning. The jungle would become a parliament, the ocean a council, the sky a chorus, a planet alive not just with life but with dialogue. The question then becomes what happens to us? Our food, our science, our faith. Religions might reinterpret ancient texts. If all beings can speak, perhaps all possess a soul. The concept of dominion over animals would vanish, our art would change. Songs written with birds, stories co-authored with whales, poetry inspired by the voices of the wild. For the first time in history, Earth would become a truly shared civilization, not human-centered, but life-centered. Yet, as we imagine this world of understanding, one truth remains. If we could talk to animals, they might not all want to talk to us. Some would turn away. Some would hide. Some would ask for nothing more than silence. Because to many creatures, humanity is not a friend, it's a storm, a force that destroys, even when it means well. The greatest irony of all is that perhaps we never needed to speak to understand them. We simply needed to listen. In reality, science has already begun to bridge this gap. Artificial intelligence now decodes patterns in whale songs, translating their grammar and syntax. Algorithms analyze the calls of elephants, parrots, and even mice finding meaning we never knew existed. We are closer than we realize to understanding animal speech. The barrier is thinning, and once it breaks, the question won't be whether we can communicate, but whether we deserve to. Imagine the world one more time. The forest, alive with whispers. The oceans, echoing with stories older than humanity itself. 
a planet speaking in millions of voices, each one saying the same thing in its own way. We are here, we have always been here, you just weren't listening. What happens when humanity finally answers back?